you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong. This is Pointless, the quiz show where obscurity counts for everything and high scores count for nothing. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so, welcome, Melanie and Beryl. You are our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? We're mother and daughter, and hopefully you can tell which one's which. <laughs> I, I can. I can. I can tell which one's... Beryl, what's she talking about? Hope I don't know. Hopefully. No Okay. Sure, I could say just about. Yes, I think I break out. Where have you come from? I come from St Albans and Beryl comes from Fareham in Hampshire. Very good. Well, very best of luck to you on the show this afternoon. Welcome back to Kirsty and Mike. You were on the show last time. We give everyone two chances, of course, to reach the final. This is your second chance. Remind us how you did. Well, where do I begin? It was a disaster. Dad was fantastic. He did really, really well. And it came to me and I'm afraid I played it so safe. But that safe girl is gone, and I'm in it to win it today, so we're going to make things change. OK. Mike's saying absolutely nothing. He's <laughs> not allowed to. He's been prepped. To. OK. <laughs> Very best of luck to you this afternoon. James and Tom, welcome to you two. How do you two know each other? Uh, we're housemates at university. Where are you at university? Uh, university of Sheffield. How long have you been at university together? Uh, two years together. Two years. Are you very competitive? Unbelievably competitive between each other, yeah. Between, right, OK. And as a team, you're just going to be unstoppable. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> right, well, very best of luck to you this afternoon. And finally, we've got Mike and Steve. How do you two know each other? Right, well, we're certainly not father and son. Uh, <laughs> we actually work for each other, yeah. You um, work for each other? That's a nice sort of symbiotic <laughs> setup you have there. Yeah, we work uh, for a training and conference centre in Sheffield. Very best of luck to all of you. Uh, we'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. There's just one more person to introduce. He's a one-man lexicon of obscurity. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. There's only one returning pair today, and that's Kirsty and Mike. Kirsty's up for it, isn't she? Is she? Mike looks sort of terrified. Oh, I'm just worried what she said in the dressing room before they came out. <laughs> I know, Mike, Mike literally looks like he's had Alex Ferguson just <laughs> screaming at him for half an hour before the show, doesn't he? Oh, do I come across that badly? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a, a tough first round. Then a nice pop culture second round here. So uh, something for everyone in the first two rounds if you want to get through to the head to head. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Now, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless. So obviously we are after the obscure answers that those 100 people didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's trying to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And every time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we will add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, let's play pointless. <laughs> OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And please be careful. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... The Commonwealth. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many realms of the Commonwealth as they could. Realms of the Commonwealth. Richard? Yeah, we're quite simply looking for any country in the world that has Queen Elizabeth II as its reigning monarch. Uh, by country, as always, we mean a member of the UN, uh, and this is as of April 2010. So any country that has Queen Elizabeth II as its reigning monarch. There we are. Right, Melanie and Beryl, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Beryl, how good is your Commonwealth knowledge? So-so. Oh, that's good. I take so-so to be a good sign. Anyone else would have said rubbish. So-so <laughs> can only be... There's a, it's either it's black or white in this one, I think, in this game, in the Commonwealth category. We are looking for realms of the Commonwealth. Any country that you think Nicholas Witchell might have I been? Think, I think <laughs> I, there's two I can think of that I think might be obscure, but I'm not absolutely... I'm going to go for it and go Mauritius. Mauritius. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said Mauritius. Oh, no! 
Unfortunately, Mauritius is a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. Mauritius, Richard. Yeah, it's very unlucky, uh, Beryl. Mauritius is a, a republic. I imagine the Queen wishes she was the monarch of Mauritius. I would have a palace there rather than Sandringham, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Bad luck, Beryl. Exactly the right sort of spirit. Exactly <laughs> the wrong answer. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Kirsty. Hello. Now then, time to show your mettle, Kirsty. We are looking for a nice, obscure Commonwealth realm. OK, I'm probably really going to die of embarrassment when this gets played back. The Falkland Islands. The Falkland Islands. It seems reasonable. OK, let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said the Falkland Islands. No! <laughs> High scoring round. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the Falkland Islands is a wrong answer as well. <laughs> Scores you 100 points. Richard, what's going on? Could not be higher scoring, could it? It's very no. close, very exciting. <laughs> don't tell me you've got Come on, guys, don't let us down, you two. Let's have, let's have some more hundreds. Uh, it's, it's not a country. It's not a country. There's a clue in the title, isn't there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a dependency, I'm afraid. Oh. Sorry. <sighs> oh, dear. James. James, James, James. 100, 100 and James. We're looking for a nice, obscure Commonwealth realm. Well, I, I thought I had quite an obscure one, but... In the light of the uh, previous two getting hundreds, I think I'm going to go for what I think is a safe bet. OK. Um, I'm going to go with Australia. OK, you are hoping Australia is going to score you as few points as possible. Let's see if it is correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Australia. It's right. That scores you 70, James, our best score yet. Richard. Yes, yeah, so it's a big score, but it's miles in front, isn't it? It's very, uh, it's very impressive. Uh, yeah, Queen Elizabeth is still the, uh, the head of state in Australia, uh, and this is as of April 2010, and her interests are looked after by Governor-General Quentin Bryce. And do you know what's unusual about uh, Governor-General Quentin Bryce? Quentin Bryce? Yeah. He was... She, he's, he's a woman. He is a woman. <laughs> He is a woman. That's exactly right. The first ever woman to hold the post. First ever woman to hold the name Quentin, probably, as well. <laughs> it must be, yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Good score, James. Our lowest so far. Steve, how good is your Commonwealth knowledge? We're looking for realms of the Commonwealth. Right, I'm just trying to think all the pink bits on a map, but that is going back a long time. Um, I'm thinking safe. I'm going to go for uh, Canada. OK, you're going to say Canada. You're hoping this is a nice, obscure answer that will score you as few points as possible. Let's see how many people said that. Canada. A good answer, Steve. Look at that. Canada scores you 39. Uh, yes, she's also the, the head of state in Canada, exactly right. Her interests are looked after by Governor General Michel Jean. OK, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. Well, as I said, very, very high scoring round to start with. Melanie and Beryl and Kirsty and Mike both on 100. Well, this is two of you. So I admit that takes the curse off it slightly. Steve and Mike obviously looking very good on 39. Lovely low score there. James and Tom, not bad. Tom, try and score low on the next pass to make sure you get through to the next round. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? So, Mike. Steve did incredibly well. Canada, nice low score there, 39. Can you better that? Um, I don't think so. Well, let me help you. You need to get 60 or less with this answer. 60 or less. So somewhere between Australia and Canada. Not geographically, but in terms of what they scored. So I might just risk it for a biscuit and say Gibraltar. What you might be doing is risking it for 100 points. But yes, uh, a <laughs> massive 100-point biscuit. OK, here is your red line. If Gibraltar... Gets you below that, you're through to the next round. Let's see if Gibraltar is a correct answer. And let's see how many people said it, if it is. Gibraltar. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a wrong answer. Another incorrect answer, which scores you 100 points, taking your total up to 139. Richard. Yeah, again, it's, it's not a country, I'm afraid, which is why you never get Gibraltar versus the Falkland Islands at the World Cup. <laughs> Tom, you are on 70. You have to score 68 or less with this answer. 68 or less will see you through to the next round. We are looking for realms of the Commonwealth. 
Okay. Um, what do you study at uni? Uh, history and politics. History and politics, with a little bit of Commonwealth studies as well thrown in? No. Well, the Commonwealth Games, yeah. I've got one that's really obscure, but I think I'm going to go with Jamaica, just to play it safe. OK, below that red line, through to the next round. Let's see if Jamaica is correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Jamaica. It's right. And you're through. A good answer. Jamaica scores you 15, gives you a total of 85. Yeah, very good answer, and safely through. When the Queen goes to Jamaica, she's got a special flag, genuinely, which is the, it's the St George's Cross, but that has a yellow pineapple on each of the arms of the cross and a massive golden E in the middle of it, encircled in roses. That's pretty e, cool, isn't it? That is cool. I quite like... It's not as cool as your impression of a cross, which was great. <laughs> look at that! Look! Yeah. It's like, a, it's like there was a cross there. Yeah. I, very good. Good score, Tom. You and James are through to the next round, come what may. Now, Mike, Kirsty, she's, she's come out of the traps all guns blazing, if I can mix as many metaphors <laughs> as that. Um, I thought she did very well. Oh, oh, she's done awfully party. well. Lovely high score of 100. <laughs> you want to be scoring 38 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers here, Mike. We are looking for realms of the Commonwealth. I think you're good at this, aren't you? Surely. Geography, well, that's your, I, that's your I've thing. I've been... had plenty of time to rack my brains. Um, I might fall in the same trap as uh, uh, two other people I've done so far, but uh, I'm going to go for um, Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago. Great answer. Here is your red line. Below that, and Trinidad and Tobago sees you through to the next round. Let's see if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Trinidad and Tobago. Do you remember when I said great answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago is an incorrect answer, unfortunately, which makes Kirsty feel a lot better, <laughs> but does score you the maximum of 100 points, I'm afraid, giving you a total of 200. Richard? Yeah, again, uh, well, you didn't fall into the same trap as everyone else, but you did fall into a trap. The Queen is not the head of state in Trinidad and Tobago, I'm afraid. Sorry. Melanie, just before I say any more, your target here is 99 points. If you can score 99 points or less, you're through to the next round. I have a country in mind, but um, if it's right, I'm hoping it's... I tell you, the worst that can happen is that you tie with Mike and yeah, Kirsty, so, you know. That's true. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Namibia. 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 Here is your red line. <laughs> <laughs> You only have to come below that. Let's see if Namibia gets you below that line. If it's a correct answer, and if it is, how many people said it? Wow. I'm afraid Namibia is also an incorrect answer, which scores you the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to 200 points. You are drawing with Mike and Kirsty. Richard? I'm afraid it's, uh, she's not the queen of it. She ain't queen there. Well, as it's a tie, we are going to set the scores to zero and start again with the two tied pairs. And the tied pairs each have to give me one more answer. And obviously, we are still looking for a nice low score from each of them. The one who scores the lowest gets through. You are now allowed to confer, OK? We are looking for realms of the Commonwealth. Melanie and Beryl, let's have an answer from you. Um, I just don't know anymore. Mm. I don't know. Is it? God, I don't know. OK, Melanie. OK, we're going to play it safe, because, again, what's gone before, we can't risk anything obscure, so we're going to say New Zealand. New Zealand. OK, let's see if New Zealand is correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. New Zealand. It's correct. 47. Now then, Mike and Kirsty, their turn to put the ball on the spot. Um, well, we were going to uh, play New Zealand, but um, we also thought uh, Bermuda. There is the red line. If Bermuda gets you below that red line, you are through to the next round. OK, let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said Bermuda. Dear. OK, that, I'm afraid, is a wrong answer. That scores you 100 points. Oh, 
dear. A very tough country. Yeah, Bermuda, again, it's not a country. It's an overseas territory. Bahamas or Barbados, both would have been right answers. But, uh, and lots of the Caribbean islands, St. Kitts, St. Nevis, St. Vincent and Grenadines, uh, Antigua. There were also four pointless answers. Let's take a look at those. So Grenada, there you go. Uh, that was a pointless answer. The Solomon Islands was a pointless answer. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, a pointless answer. And our old friend Tuvalu, which is almost always a pointless answer. If in, if in doubt, even with sort of trees of England, always say Tuvalu and uh, you won't go too far wrong. <laughs> and if anyone at any point had said the UK, do you know what that would have scored? Something pitiful. 23. Wow. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. So after that tie break, I'm afraid the losing pair of the highest score is Mike and Kirsty. What would you have liked to have come up? Well, for me, yeah. being a trash mag addict, it would have been good if it had been celebrities. Celebrities. Mike. Fashion. I've got to tell you, genuinely, you're not going to like what's coming up in round two. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> Honestly. Is it celebrities. Yeah, it might be. Might be. Oh, fashion. Yeah, is this it? I can't believe it. <laughs> Should we just we retake? Yeah, no, we do that. Yeah, we uh, retake. Yeah. Let me, let me find. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll retake it. We'll take it. Fine. Well, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you. This is your second chance, I'm afraid, on the show, so it really is goodbye this time. But thank you so much. You've been brilliant you. contestants. Thanks very much for playing. For the remaining three pairs, though, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. OK, the category for round two is... Celebrities. <laughs> oh, dear. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. So the question is... Celebrities and their spouses. Celebrities and their spouses. Beryl, you look disgusted. <laughs> uh, in this round, we're about to show you a list of celebrities. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us who their spouses are. Richard. Yeah, we're going to give you the names of six celebrities. You've just got to tell us who their spouse is. The more obvious ones will score high points, the easier ones low points. If you give us an incorrect answer, it will score 100 points. I should point out that this is who they're married to as of April 2010, because knowing celebrities, <laughs> by the time this goes out, it'll just be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and your first six are... Demi Moore, David Bowie, Mariah Carey, Prince Charles, Katie Price, Jennifer Lopez. I'm going to read those all out again. Demi Moore, David Bowie, Mariah Carey, Prince Charles, Katie Price, Jennifer Lopez. OK, right. Beryl, this is your favourite category, isn't it? Oh, couldn't be better. Absolutely superb. <laughs> um, Not. How many of these people are you aware of? I'm aware of them all. All of them? But not their spouses. Not their plus ones? No. Nope. Do you read glossy magazines, Beryl? Not at all. Not at all? No. Nope. I will hazard a guess. OK, it sounds like you're going to have to. I'll go for Demi Moore. Mm-hmm. And at the last count, I think she was married to Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Let's see if Ashton Kutcher is indeed married to Demi Moore. And if he is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Ashton Kutcher, Demi Moore. It's good, Beryl. <laughs> 37. <laughs> That scores you 37. See, Ashton Kutcher, that's quite a weird name to pluck out of thin air. Because it's... It because sticks... it's so weird, that's why I remembered it. I don't buy that at all, do you? I don't buy it. No. Beryl, you know every single one of them. You know Ashton Kutcher, you know him very well. 15 years at Demi's Junior, as you, as you know very well. Yes. She was previously married, of course, to uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Beryl knew that. Yeah, I know Beryl knows that. But I'll, I'll get you to take us through the board later. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. James, we are looking for the spouses of these celebrities. There they are. There are five of them left on the board. Who knows there might even be a pointless answer on there? Do you know? It's, I won't know it. <laughs> really? Um, Do you not know celebrities? Not, Is this not your...? No, not really my forte, unfortunately. Not really your forte? Um, I was actually going to go for Demi Moore. I knew that Beryl has really set the bar quite yeah. high there. I think I'm going to go for Katie Price. I'm hoping that I know the right one. I'm going to go with Alex Reed. Alex Reed. Let's see if that is correct. 
And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Alex Reed, Katie Price. It's right. <laughs> 28. <laughs> Alex Reed scores you 28 points. Richard. Yes, at, at time of recording, Alex Reed and Katie Price are indeed married. I think they're about to uh, celebrate their orange anniversary. That's... <laughs> I think in their wedding vows, they said, do you fake this tan to be your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> Very good. James, that scores you 28 points. OK, so we are looking for the spouses of these celebrities. Now then, Mike. I was going to go for Alex Reed as well. Um, I've got to go for a nice and easy one. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a low one as well, because when you say celebrities, you probably won't say Prince Charles as a celebrity. He's a celebrity? Really? I, in... I wouldn't automatically use the word celebrity for Prince Charles. Katie Price, you think of straight away. So I'm hoping it's going to be a low one. And that is my sort of... What, hang on, you're, you're about to it. pick Prince Charles yes. on, the, on this basis? On this basis, because... Because, because he's not I such a celebrity, you think people won't know who his wife is? <laughs> OK, so you're going to go with HRH, Prince Charles. Yeah, Camilla Parker Bowles. Camilla Parker Bowles. Parker Bowles. Prince Charles, Camilla Parker Bowles. When it's right... <laughs> it's right, that scores you 61. Richard. Let's fill in the rest of them, shall we? David Bowie. She's, she's a model with a single name and I can't... Imam, Imam. It isn't, it's almost Imam. imam. It's Imam. Iman, that's yeah. right, not Imam. Iman, that would have scored you Iman. 13 points. Do you know who uh, do you know who Jennifer Lopez is married to? No idea. Uh, she's married to Mark Anthony. I don't know if you got that at home. Wow. Mark Anthony would have scored you seven points. He used to be married to... Cleopatra. <laughs> <laughs> and Mariah Carey. Do you know who Mariah Carey is married to? No. Would have scored you four points, and she is married to Mr Nick Cannon, who sounds like someone you used to go to school with. Doesn't he? Yeah, but I don't think he is. Because that would have been on his Facebook update, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> have just married Mariah Carey. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Well, quite an impressive low-scoring scoreboard after last round. James and Tom looking very strong there on 28. Tom, keep up that low score. You'll be through to the head-to-head -head for sure. Mike and Steve, 61. That's quite a high score there for Prince Charles. Steve... Try and score as low as you possibly can. Beryl and Melanie on 37. Not a bad score at all, Beryl. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more celebrities up on the board. And we have got... Gwyneth Paltrow, Tom Cruise, Heidi Klum, Nicola Sarkozy, Nicole Kidman, Michael Douglas. Let me just read those again. Gwyneth Paltrow, Tom Cruise, Heidi Klum, Nicola Sarkozy, Nicole Kidman, Michael Douglas. Now, remember, we are looking for the spouses of these celebrities, and you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Steve, you're on 61. You are the high scorers. You're going to have to score as low as you possibly can with this answer. What's that board looking like to you, Steve? Very difficult for me. Uh, right. I've got to go safe, because it's the only one I know. Um, it would be Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Michael Douglas, Catherine Zeta-Jones. You are the high scorers, so there's no red line for you. You've just got to hope that this is a really low score. Let's see if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Well, it is right. Scores you 52, takes your total up to 113. Richard. Uh, yeah, they were married in the year 2000. They share a birthday, which is September the 25th, both born on September the 25th, but okay. not in the same year, yeah. I don't <laughs> think. OK, so we are looking for the spouses of these celebrities. So, Tom, it's down to you. You are on 28. You have to score 84 or less to stay in the game. 84 or less. Do you think you can do it? Pretty confident, yeah. Pretty confident. Do you know all of these celebrities? Um, I think I probably know all of them, yeah. Do you know their spouses? I do, yeah. Well, Brilliant. I think I'm going to have to hazard a guess with Heidi Klum and Seal. Heidi Klum and Seal. Here's your red line. Nice high red line. 
If Heidi Klum and Seal are indeed an item, and it gets below that red line, you are through to the head-to-head -head round. OK, let's see if it's right. And if it is, how many people said it? Heidi Klum and Seal. It's right. Could be a low score, this one. Very good. 24. Takes your total up to 52. Richard, Heidi Klum and Seal. Yeah, good answer. Heidi Klum married Seal in 2005, and she took her husband's name, so now she's called Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> And Melanie. OK, so we are looking for the spouses of these celebrities. Melanie, you are on 37. You have to score 75 or less to yeah. stay in the game. I think you can do it. Do you? I hope so. Um, I know three of the four remaining, so it's just a question of guessing which one will be less than that. And on the basis that she is more famous than her husband and they're not really seen together, I'm going to go for Chris Martin as the husband of Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin. There is the red line. Below that red line, through to the head-to-head. -head. <sighs> let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Gwyneth Paltrow, Chris Martin. <laughs> yep, it's good enough. That scores you 22, taking your total up to 59. Richard? Very good. They're married in 2003. They've got two kids called Apple and Moses. Uh, and this is as of April 2010. Let's take a look at the other answers. Tom Cruise is married to... Um, Katie... Katie, not Price. <laughs> Katie Holmes. No, it's Katie Price. It is now Katie Price. <laughs> no, you're quite right. It's Katie Holmes. That would have scored you 31 points. Nicolas Sarkozy is married Carla to... Carla Bruni. Carla Bruni. That would have scored you 12 points. And 12? Nicole Kidman. <laughs> it's Keith Urban, of course. Keith Urban, the country singer. Keith is Urban. absolutely right. Would have scored you five points, best answer on the board. So, well done if you got that at home. Thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is Mike and Steve. Mike and Steve. I was expecting greater things from you, I'll be honest. With your strange symbiotic working relationship. I think for me, uh, I knew the Alex Reid one. Um, I... My logic in the Camilla Parker ball thing didn't quite work. Um, I think we just missed out on this one. Yeah, you did. You did. However, very best of luck next time. We will see you, and I hope you'll go much further than just round two. But uh, you've been great contestants. Thanks very much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So well done, James and Tom, Melanie and Beryl. You've made it through to the head-to-head -head round. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to the final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. <laughs> right, you're going to go head-to-head -head on up to three questions. Now, you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than your opponents to win that point. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many ingredients in a Victoria sandwich cake as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the five ingredients in a traditional Victoria sandwich cake as laid down by the Women's Institute. Laid down by the WI. OK, James and Tom, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. OK, we have an answer. Yeah, uh, we're going to go for caster sugar. Caster sugar. Melanie and Beryl. Oh. Eggs, Eggs flour, flour, butter, butter. Is it butter or butter? Raspberry jam. Um, jam. Go for jam. Should we go for jam or eggs? Eggs will be the most obvious one, butter. I think. Flour, I think, will be obvious. Flour Let's will be obvious. Jam. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for jam. Jam? Yes. Yeah. OK, we have caster sugar, we have jam. We were looking for nice, obscure answers. The most obscure one, of course, will win the point. James and Tom have said caster sugar. Let's see how many people said caster sugar. It's correct. <laughs> 78. That's what sugar scores you. Melanie and Beryl have gone for jam. Let's see how many people said jam. Oh, B. 
beat sugar, but only just. Look at that. So, after the first question, we are 1 0 up, Melanie and Beryl. Richard. Uh, yes, yeah, a very high scoring round, actually. There was one answer that would have beaten Jam. Let's take a look at all five. Butter or margarine was at the bottom there with 62. Jam we've seen on 69. Eggs and sugar both scored 78. So if you had said eggs, it would have been a tie. And the flour right at the top with 90. So after the first question, it is 1 0 to Melanie and Beryl. Melanie and Beryl, if you win this point, you are through to the final and can play for that £2,250. James and Tom, you've got to win this one to stay in the game. Here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many artists who have sold more than 10 million singles as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for the name of any artist or group who have sold 10 million or more singles in the UK uh, up to April 2010. Any artist or group who've sold more than 10 million singles in the UK. OK, this time it is Melanie and Beryl to go first. I'm going to go for something from my era, which was the 80s, and say Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Um, I think we're going to go for Westlife. You're going to go for Westlife. OK, Melanie and Beryl, you have said Duran Duran. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Duran Duran. <laughs> that's incorrect. It's OK. James and Tom, you have said Westlife. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, how many people said it? Westlife. <laughs> You've been thrown a lifeline, Melanie and Beryl. That is also incorrect. After the second question, Melanie and Beryl are ahead 1-0. Richard? It's bad news for James and Tom that Westlife haven't sold 10, 10 million singles, but uh, good news for Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. There's actually, there, there are only eight acts in the history of the UK charts who've sold 10 million singles or more. Let's take a look at... Uh, Rolf look at Harris. Rolf Harris not there either. Mm. ABBA oh. would have scored you 11 points. Queen would have got you 13. Elton John, there we go, with 18. Cliff Richard with 19. Cliff Richard has sold more than anyone. 21 million singles Cliff Richard has sold. Madonna with 20. And uh, Michael Jackson, 27. Elvis Presley, 34. And The Beatles up there with 72. Wow. Thank you very much, Richard. So, here is your third question. Again, James and Tom, you have to win this to stay in the game. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of golf club as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're simply looking for any of the main varieties of golf club uh, as uh, laid down by the PGA. We're not looking for, for the numbers that you would have on a golf club, but simply the main varieties of golf club that you would carry in your bag. There are six varieties. There are six different types of golf club. OK, James and Tom, you get to go first this time. We're going to go for Pitching Wedge. Pitching Wedge. Very good. Melanie and Beryl, Pitching Wedge is, is gone. I think that's a good answer. I don't, I don't no, know anything no, about no, golf. No, 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 no. An iron, a wood. What do you want to go for? A wood. A wood. A wood. We have a wedge and we have a wood. God, put those together, you can make <laughs> China. <laughs> OK. James and Tom said wedge. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Wedge. It's the right answer. <laughs> 21. <laughs> A good answer. Melanie and Beryl have gone with wood. <sighs> Do you think you're going to win this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely certain. OK. Wood. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Wood. Well, it's right. Close. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Wood scores only 16. Wins you the point, sees you through to the final. Richard, Wood scoring lower yeah, than the edge. Very, very good. In the six, there's five that people will know. There is actually a pointless answer here, right at the bottom of the list. So very well done at home if you said hybrid, which is a kind of a hybrid between a, an, an iron and a wood. Wood, there it is, 16. 
driver 18, wedge 21, putter 25, and up the top there, in fact, iron with 26. Well, so the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head is James and Tom. See, I thought pitching wedge was a brilliant answer. I mean, pitching wedge. Do either of you play golf? I do, yeah. Yep. You could have named all of those. Yeah. Of I those. think we were going to go for hybrid, but I thought it might be a bit obscure and... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on, Tom, that's the lamest excuse. This is pointless. It's too obscure for it. So too obscure? It There's no too obscure. No such thing. No so. such thing. <laughs> Thank you very much for being such excellent contestants. We'll see you next time. So for Melanie and Beryl, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win £2,250. So congratulations, Melanie and Beryl. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have the chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,250. Now, the rules are simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. We've had no pointless answers on the show today. You just have to come up with one now to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. And you can go for American football, British theatre, childhood pastimes. I'd go for the theatre. I, I would feel happy with theatre. Yeah, I, as soon as I saw them, I knew that you would go but straight to the British theatre and, and I don't, none, none of the others shout out at me, so I'm happy to go with that. We'll Which go. bit of British theatre would you love that to be? Musicals. Musicals. <laughs> <laughs> musicals. It would probably yeah. say musicals if it was going to be musicals. Or anything that Judy Dench was in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many is it musicals. No, it's plays of Harold Pinter as they could. Richard. We're looking for uh, the titles of any of Harold Pinter's plays and we're going by the list on his official website. Right, OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that £2,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Right, your 60 seconds start now. I don't know any. The caretaker. Birthday party, and I don't know anymore. I need to. We have to come up with a third. Third, the caretaker. Um, the caretaker. Are these popular? These well birthday known party. Ones? Yeah, I think I don't know whether they're his actually. Oh. The caretaker birthday party. Oh gosh, that's another one. <gasps> Parrot Pinter. Oh. We have to come up with three. We have to say something. I, I mean, I can't think of a third that he's done. I cannot just think, think of a of third. A, just think of any play. Waiting yeah. for God, uh, he didn't do it, but that's all I can think because, of. Uh, uh, no. Do you, um, you've got time. Do you want to make one up? Yes, I'll have to make one up. Why not? Uh, uh, so the, two, the caretaker. The caretaker and the birthday party. You know, um, you know that they are from him. Was it the servant? Have they been made into films or, or on yes, the TV the case, or anything? Yes, the caretaker was. I'm sure the caretaker was with Tom Courtney or Tom Bell. OK, that's your minute up. What are the three answers you're going you're to give me? Um, the birthday party. The birthday party. The caretaker. The caretaker. And waiting for Godot. And waiting for Godot. Yes. What do you think is your most confident answer? The birthday party. The birthday party. What's your least confident waiting answer? For waiting for Godot. OK, as you said, you're... That's one you just but had to put into all the place. OK, so we'll put those up on the board. In that order, Waiting for Godot, The Caretaker, and the, the Birthday Party. We are looking for Harold Pinter plays. Your first answer is Waiting for Godot. This is the one you were least confident in. You only have to find one pointless answer to win that £2,250. Let's see if it's correct, Waiting for Godot. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Of course, we knew that was incorrect. Yeah. So that's one of your shots gone. What would you spend the money on if you won £2,250? Oh, I, I really don't know. Because I've never won any money before, ever. I just, I just not thought about the money. It was just coming on the show. I really didn't think we'd get this far. Melanie, how about you? Have you got any...? Yes, I've, I'm recently married, so we haven't been on honeymoon yet, so I'd put the money towards You honeymoon. haven't yet been on honeymoon? No, You've a deferred honeymoon? Yes, Oh, have you set aside time to go? Yes, yes. You have. You just haven't... Do you know where you're going to go? Yes, we're going to Australia. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. OK. 
we are looking for Harold Pinter plays. We wanted nice, obscure Harold Pinter plays. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, which is The Caretaker. This is your second shot at the jackpot. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win that £2,250. Let's see if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said The Caretaker. Oh, it's right. right. <laughs> down it goes. It has to go all the way down to zero if you're going to win that £2,250. Still going down. Ten people said the caretaker. It was a good answer. It's a really good score, ten. You'd be very pleased with yeah. that in any other round. <laughs> Sadly, it's, just, it's, not it's all or nothing in this. You only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. We are looking for Harold Pinter plays. We want a nice, obscure, pointless answer, an answer that none of our 100 people said. This third answer you said was your most confident, the birthday party. Ooh, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure now. I'm not so sure now. Well, this is your last <laughs> chance. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £2,250. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. The birthday party. There it is, it's correct. You said this was the one you had most faith in. Caretaker only scored 10. Will this be a pointless answer? The birthday party. Down it goes. A really good answer. Only three people knew it, but sadly, you didn't find that all-important, pointless answer. So I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £2,250, which will roll over to the next show. But you have been amazing, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. Thank you. Thank you. Rich? That's unlucky. That's a tough category, isn't it? a that? really tough category. Let's take a look at the pointless answers. Those are the answers that none of our 100 people gave. The first one, A Kind of Alaska, that was first performed in 1982. Do you know who starred in that? Judy Dent. Judy Dent. Judy Dent. She <laughs> 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 didn't sing, though, did she? Uh, she didn't sing, no. Yeah. Celebration, Landscape, those are both pointless answers. Well done if you've got any of these at home. Uh, Moonlight. Mountain Language with uh, Michael Gambon and Miranda Richardson. One for the road. Party time. Remembrance of things past and the basement. Yeah, All of those were pointless answers. That's, well, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Melanie and Beryl, but it's been fantastic having you on the show. And you've, you've done so well. It's only your first chance, your first time on the show, and you've come right through to the final. Thank you so much for playing. You've been wonderful contestants. Thank you. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we'll be playing for £3,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.